Have you ever felt hopeless, like all is lost, you're doomed for inevitable failure, and it's like, why bother even trying? Look, we've all been there. But in this video, I'm gonna point out a few things for you that might help you feel a little bit of relief around that topic, and also maybe help you feel a little more empowered. If you feel kind of powerless right now or hopeless, listen, I just want to say it is not your fault because who in the world decides that they want to be hopeless? Nobody comes into the world going, you know what? I think I want to be hopeless. I mean, it's kind of fun to watch on TV. <laughs> Have you ever seen The Walking Dead? I'm like, why do these people even bother? Oh my God. But that's not, <laughs> that's not fun in real life. <laughs> if you're hopeless, I'm gonna guess that your life has been somewhat difficult for you. Like every time you get a little bit of headway, boom, another disaster strikes and ruins your progress. A little bit of headway, boom, another disaster strikes and ruins your advancement. I was totally in that position, you know, early on in my career, I was so broke and every time I would get a little bit ahead, I felt like something would happen and I would just keep trying and trying and trying. I mean, I came from extreme poverty and I really didn't want to be poor, so I took these crazy odd jobs, like I was a toy soldier at a mall, I sold karaoke machines at Costco, which is the worst job ever because nobody wants to hear you sing. But you know, I'm not one for being ignored, so I would like just look right into the eyes of the people ignoring me and sing a song that could be directed at a jilted lover. I'd be like, I'm not telling you, I'm not going. And the wife be like, do you know him? <laughs> I even took a role in a movie called Hell House where I was like this uh, camera guy recording these reporters and then after we were done, they went to their motel room and they were doing it and you know, he was you know in her nether regions and I walk in because I became possessed by like a ghost and I shoved his head into her nether regions until he suffocated to death. <laughs> And then she got up and she was like, why did you stop, baby? <laughs> I was like, I read the script. I was like, this is a joke, right? <laughs> no, but it, we, it actually, it's out there. It's called Hell House. Um, it got three stars out of 10 on IMDb. <laughs> so, um, you know, we've all had to do some desperate things. But literally, like, I know exactly where you guys are coming from. Because, you know, I would get a little bit ahead and then my car would break down. I would get a little bit ahead and my family had some kind of emergency that needed to help them cover. It was just like a non stop cycle of just a head, boom, a head, boom, a head, boom. When I would tell people about uh, my situation, I would get one of two responses. The first response I would get is keep trying. And the second response I would get is, yeah, man, it's hopeless. And I actually bought into, yeah, man, it's hopeless narrative for a little while there. And it made me feel better, like there was nothing wrong with me. But you know what the problem with it was? I started kind of rolling along and I started defending that position to other people. So they would tell me something that was hopeful and I would be like, yeah, well, it's hopeless. So, and then I would start defending it as if it were a universal truth when it wasn't. It was just a belief that I adopted to help me make myself feel better because I was down, right? And that it's all hopeless and there's no use trying narrative worked until, okay, until other people around me were starting to find success, which made me feel like there was something broken with me, there was something wrong with me, and that is the worst feeling in the world. And this is why, and this is gonna be kinda hard to hear, listen, look, there are people out there who've tried to make it, and then they didn't. And so they have decided that the world is hopeless and they are defending that position. So actually, there are people out there who are rooting for you not to make it. Because if they decide that the world is hopeless and they're not making it, and you make it, it disrupts their reality. And so they're kind of rooting for you to fail. There are people out there like that. I'm so sorry to say. But here's the thing to know about feeling hopeless. Hopelessness is not actually an emotion. All right. Disappointment is an emotion. Sadness is an emotion. Frustration is an emotion. Hopeless is the meaning that you add as a reaction to the emotion that you're feeling, right? So it's like, ah, something went bad, I feel sad, and things are hopeless. So that's a meaning. Do you understand how that works? You, you see what I'm saying? Because hopeless is not technically an emotion, right? 
It's like if you're trying to lose weight and you get on the scale and you look and, and you've gained five pounds. You feel angry. You feel disappointed. Okay? And then people say things like, I feel fat. You can't feel fat. <laughs> That's not an emotion. That's a meaning that comes as a result of the disappointment or sadness or anger that you're feeling at the scale. So you say you feel fat, but it's impossible to feel fat because it's not a real emotion. You get what I'm saying? So hopeless is not really an emotion. It's a meaning. Also, hopeless is not an objective truth. Let me explain what that means. So Aiden's Korean, right? <laughs> and uh, there's gravity. So if I pick up this uh, pen, and it's gonna fall. That's gravity. That's an objective truth. Hopeless is not really an objective truth. You can say that you think that it's hopeless, but it's subjective. Someone else can look at your situation and go, oh, well, there's hope. So it's really up to a matter of interpretation. Also, the same goes for a feeling fat. If you go on the scale and you gain five pounds and you go, I feel fat, well, are you fat? Is that objectively true? Or is that a subjective truth for you? Because someone else can look at your scale and see what you weigh and go, wow, you're a skinny bitch. Very, very important to know the difference between objective truth and subjective truth, right? Objective truth, you know, can openers from the 99 cent store will break on you after three uses. That's an objective truth. <laughs> No, that's, that's not, but you know what I'm saying. Like <laughs> everything at the 99 cent store costs 99 cents. That's an objective truth. Sometimes they sneak in items that are 3.99. Anyway, but you get what I'm saying. Objective truth that everybody can agree to. There's gravity, Aiden's Korean. Subjective truth is something like, mm, Starbucks coffee is too strong. Or, you know, Madonna is the queen of pop, right? <laughs> Some of you boys watching are like, oh, hell no, that would be Ariana Grande or uh, <laughs> Lady Gaga. <laughs> and you would be wrong. <laughs> no, that's a subjective truth. And also, in fact, things are hopeless is a subjective truth. But let's break down hopelessness for a minute. The reason why you might feel hopeless is because you feel like you don't have any choices in whatever situation you're in. You feel you're out of options. But the truth of the matter is, there are always options. You might not like the options you have, but there are always options. Like, you got a new job and your car broke down and now you have no way to get to work. You might feel like you have no options. But actually, you have a lot of options. You just might not like the ones you have available to you. You could ask a friend for a ride every day, you could hitchhike, you could go on YouTube and try to fix the car yourself, you could ask your mom for money, ask your friend for money, you could go to the truck stop and, you know, panhandle for money so you can try to fix the car, you could do a GoFundMe, you could, uh, any myriad of, find a sugar daddy, I don't know. There's always options, it's just not great options, but you always have options. And once you accept that objective reality, that there are always options for you, whether you like them or not, you always have options. So if you accept that objective reality, now you're empowered. Now you can actually take a look at the situation and go, what is the best possible option that I have available to me right now? And you start looking for options. Guess what? Once you start looking for options, more options show themselves and that's empowerment. Again, if you're looking at this, it means you have a computer, which means you have access to the world wide internet, the world wide web. I think it's called world www world wide web. <laughs> it means you have access to world wide web. It means you have access to all kinds of information out there and that's empowerment. You know, you can accept that reality and try to look for ways to affect your life in the way that you want to move using whatever you got. How many choices are you allowing yourself to see at this very moment as it relates to the things that you want? And this is so tough, you guys. I'm gonna get a little like mind Jedi on you. It's hard because there are people who've given up and they want you to give up because it reaffirms their subjective belief that the world 
is unfair and it's impossible and it's hopeless. So they want you to join their ranks to strengthen their modality that the world is hopeless so they can sit back and not do anything. Don't do that. Don't buy into that. But there are people who are going to be advocating for you to buy into it. And I guarantee there's going to be some people who watch this video who are going to be like, no, oh, Aiden, you don't know what you're talking about. Blah, blah. They're going to fight for their limitation. I don't want you to be one of them. If you're watching this video, you want to move forward. You don't want to be one of those people. Trust me. Let me talk privilege for just one second. Okay, like privilege is uh, having advantages, right? Like having, you know, being ahead of the game. So for example, say your goal is to get to Los Angeles. People who have privilege live right in Pasadena, 10 miles away, and they have a car that could drive them here, right? If you are a disadvantage, you may be living in West Virginia. You're hella far away. And it's gonna be harder for you to get to Los Angeles from West Virginia. Clearly, let's not deny reality. West Virginia is so much further than Pasadena right there, right? So it is gonna be harder for you, it is. And you know what? You might not have a car. You might not have money to get over here. But you know, you've got to maintain your freedom of choice. You could actually sit there and look at, you don't have a car and you don't have money and just go, ah, it's hopeless and given up. And totally ignore the fact that you have two legs to walk on, you have a bike, you can hitchhike, you can panhandle, you can go on the World Wide Web and try to get, find a way to make money through the World Wide Web. You can ask your friends for support. And if you want to, you could get to Los Angeles if you wanted to, if you maintained your freedom of choice. Okay, but if you give in to things are hopeless and life's unfair, then you won't ever get here. And I don't want anybody to ever be in that position because you know what? That's a really sad place to be. It's a really, really sad. It's just not, not a happy place. You know, you deserve to go after what you want, but you've got to be able to look at all of your options available to you fully and maintain your freedom of choice. So what is the point of this video? My point is if you do feel hopeless, Okay, what are the emotions that you're experiencing behind the meaning of hopeless? Are you sad? Are you disappointed? That's totally cool. But that meaning that you've attached, it's hopeless, may or may not be true. And so what we all want to get at the practice of is looking at our options for what they are. How many options do you actually have? How many options can you find to move in the direction of where you would like to go in your life and maintain your freedom of choice? Because that is the path to success. If you give up, if, if you want that and you just give up, you, you can't be happy. <laughs> like it's, it's gonna be very difficult for you to be happy. Um, nothing is more painful than holding yourself apart from that which you actually want, thinking that you can't get it because of a meaning that you've constructed in your mind. And now you're gonna be joining one of those people who are like, ah, oh, it's hopeless to try to convince other people that it's hopeless. Don't do that. Don't do that to yourself. Don't do that to other people. So please, if you're watching this video, give yourself the gift of the freedom of choice, okay? Thanks for watching, I appreciate it. Um, if you wanna learn more about how your brain works to help you uh, move forward, watch my video on reticular activating system and emotional momentum. Also take a look at my video on success principles and get a copy of my book, The Art of Being Yay. Yahoo! <laughs> All right guys, thanks, thanks for watching.